Outtakes from last night's Republican presidential primary in Milwaukee. But the question now that many are asking is who will ultimately be the Republican candidate to take on Joe Biden for the White House? Well, the GOP has conducted its first presidential primary debate, which saw eight candidates often engage into heated exchanges. The frontrunner, Donald Trump, skipped the event. While some predicted that the event would be boring without Donald Trump, the ultimate showman, that was not the case. Back in 2016, you may remember that the former president was the life of the primary debates. But the eight rivals who traveled to Wisconsin, at least some of them, proved that they could bring some excitement even without the former president's help. The eight Republican presidential candidates traded barbs on issues from the economy to climate to the war in Ukraine. The candidates often took shots at one another and at President Joe Biden to try to emerge as the most viable alternative to him. Five months before the kickoff nominating contest in Iowa and some 14 months before the election, some candidates stood out from the pack. However, some seem to languish on the sidelines. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has consistently stood in second place in polls well behind Donald Trump. But in the debates, it was Vivek Ramaswamy, the 38-year-old tech entrepreneur who was at the center of the debate's most dramatic moments, as all candidates traded barbs and engaged in a heated debate in Milwaukee. Take a listen. I'm the only person on the stage who isn't bought and paid for, so I can say this. The climate change agenda is a hoax. The climate change agenda is a hoax. Ramaswamy, a fierce Trump defender who called Trump the best president of the 21st century during the debate, is rising in national polls. He faced plenty of incoming fire from his more experienced rivals who appeared to view him as the biggest threat, even bigger than Ron DeSantis. Now is not the time for on-the-job training. We don't need to bring in a rookie. We don't need to bring in people without experience. It took more than an hour for moderators to ask about Donald Trump's legal battles. And when the candidates were asked if they would pardon Trump if elected president, this is what unfolded. If former President Trump is convicted in a court of law, would you still support him as your party's choice? Please raise your hand if you would. Just be clear. The responses from the eight candidates on stage just illustrated Trump's clout. Trump remains the clear cut favorite among Republican voters. Moreover, DeSantis, who placed second in the vast majority of national GOP primary polls behind Trump, came into the evening needing to separate himself from the rest of the pack. And while he showed high energy and made several points on how he had done as a governor, especially during the COVID pandemic in Florida, DeSantis at times ignored questions from moderators about his policies should he be elected. All right, lots to talk about. For more on this, we are being joined by political analyst Dr. Christina Aona Dragomir. Christina, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. She's also joining us from New York. You know, what was interesting was that while this debate was very high energy, perhaps not uh, something that many had anticipated, without Donald Trump, but we did see that the attacks weren't leveled against Ron DeSantis. It was more Vivek Ramaswamy. I was shocked to see that perhaps uh, former pres uh, Vice President Pence's entire debate strategy was to go after Vivek Ramaswamy. Hi, Susan. Um, great to being back with you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yesterday's debate captured the attention of very many people uh, within the United States and abroad, obviously. And Vivek Ramaswamy came out as well prepared, strategic, ready to create memorable nights. And therefore, he was able to create um, the front stage where he was also attacked. So I think that there are several reasons why this was happening. First of all, it's because he has been rising in the polls, and indeed he is uh, beyond uh, DeSantis, uh, but nevertheless, he is the third one um, in the polls, and therefore he was able to get um, the attention on, on the stage. Furthermore, 
um, he was uh, receiving a lot of punches, but he was also throwing punches. He was not very shy of that as well. He was quite mm -hmm. critical towards the other candidates, both in speech and also in his body language. Even when he was not speaking, his body language was quite critical of them as well. Um, and also, he left himself open to several to several punches and to several areas um, for the criticism of the others. And this could be for very many reasons. It could be that we are seeing a generational shift within American politics. Um, he is a um, notably younger politician, and he is obviously reaching out to many voters who have a different style, who listen to very different political messages, who are very short, who are very brief, who are very clear. But in doing so, they are leaving aside many of the nuances that more seasoned politicians like Pence, Christie or Haley are able to navigate with more ease. But I think most importantly, and this is something that really brings it to our attention, is the fact that Trump was not on stage, but Vivek Ramaswamy was. And what does it mean? It means that many ideas that Ramaswamy actually expressed were very much aligned with former President Trump's and current candidates Trump's ideas. And as a result of it, when the other candidates were actually attacking Ramaswamy, they were attacking Trump's ideas and Trump's um, ideology and mm -hmm. Trump's, Trump's way of conducting politics. It was much easier for them to attack Ramaswamy and not bear the consequences of the public than it would have been for the for them to directly attack Trump. Therefore, it was a little bit of an easier, um, an easier target, but I think that as a result of it, um, it led to quite of a success for Vivek Ramaswamy, who came um, out of the night, probably gaining more support. Definitely, he became more well-known on the national and maybe even international mm -hmm. Republican stage. And also, probably this will help him in raising funds for the next stages of this um, of this uh, campaign. But if I can add just one more thing, I think that it's really Im an important moment in American politics, what we have noticed last night, because this is the development of second uh, tier of Trump's politics. Um, Ramaswamy is of a different generation, not only of a different generation in terms of age, but of a different generation in terms of the interests, in terms of um, conducting politics, in terms of making the change that probably it's needed. Um, and uh, but at the same time, adopting some of the ideas that make Trump so popular. So we are seeing the Trump policy seeping through the Republican Party and making its way through not only in the person of Trump, but also in the other candidates as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think his line that Americans are hungry for purpose, especially those in his own generation will resonate with many. But that the million dollar question ultimately is, no matter how well these other candidates do at these debates, are they able to pull away from Donald Trump's percentage point leads in polls or not? They could go up and you know get votes from one another, but do they ultimately affect the front runner that's pulling over 50 percent, almost 60 percent? So um, Trump is continuing to lead. He's continuing to lead with a very large margin. Um, candidate Trump, it doesn't seem very worried about the other candidates who came in swinging. Um, it seems to be that this was um, a political game that was played last night. One that to some might look like this is a race for the vice presidency candidacy within the United States. And the candidates trying to prove themselves worthwhile of being on the national stage and maybe being the part of the, the partners that Trump would need for the further elections. So far, we do not see any of these candidates emerging as a real threat to the candidate. Trump, and probably this is not going to change in the in the next um, in the next months. However, I think all of them are prepared for a new stage of politics and the eventuality of Trump actually not being um, the candidate 
from the Republican Party. So they are preparing the next or the plan B of this. But in the current circumstances, I think that we still see a very strong candidate, Trump. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. 34 more days until that second debate. We'll see if the former president shows up or not. Christina, great to always talk to you. Thanks for joining us on We On. I'll Thank speak to you. you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much.